All right. Well, glad to be back today. Good to see everyone here. I'm really excited to introduce Mr. Coleman Warner uh, from the Max. This is I'm I'm really excited. My family's going to Pensacola, Florida tomorrow. So my plan is maybe stop by the Max on the way, which would be great because we're going through Meridian. So uh, Mr. Warner joined the Max as director of development in August 2020. A uh, native of Meridian with family roots in Tupelo uh, and in the Mississippi Delta. He's a career newspaper journalist, writer, and editor, spending most of his career at the Times Picayune in New Orleans, but also a few years at the Clarion Legend. A post newspaper work on administration and communication positions for a decade at the National World War II Museum in New Orleans. That's really cool. And before coming to the map. So without further ado, Mr. Coleman Warner, so happy to have you, sir. Thank you very much. I hope uh, I hope I'm showing up where I should be on the screen. And uh, it's a real privilege to be here with the Rotary Club. Uh, I want to thank Sean Brevard, our board member, for being here and for her tremendous support from this part of the state. And I know that I have a limited amount of time to fit the Rotary program. And so uh, if I run too long, you could do what one of my grandfathers used to do in church. When the pastor ran long, he would do this. Look at his watch and hold up his arm for the whole church to see. So things would wind up pretty quick then. Um, I wanted I wanted to uh, stress uh, just as starting out. Um, let me see. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, I wanted to stress just starting out a little bit of my Tupelo connection and how proud I am of that. Oh, let me also, uh, before I go any further, thank Robbie Parman and Jenny Jones for helping uh, make this event possible today. We appreciate all support. Uh, thank you for all your efforts. I know it takes time and energy and all of that. But I wanted to stress my Tupelo connections just for a moment. And uh, my, my mother and her family is from Tupelo. My uh, grandfather ran a cattle a hauling business here many years ago, Roy Williams. And uh, my mother, this is notable, I think, in terms of the arts connection, my uh, mother was influenced growing up in Tupelo, uh, took advantage of the strong programs in the schools here, and ultimately became a theater uh, instructor and director in Meridian, and had some great times that way. So the influence of this town uh, on the education, on the arts, is keenly felt. Jack Reed is uh, an individual from Tupelo who had a powerful influence on education in our state. I actually covered him at one time in the early 80s. And so I deeply appreciate all of those connections. And I should also mention um, another family connection. And this goes to my interviewing for my job at the MAX, my current job. I got to the end of the interview and um, they said, well, is there anything else you'd like to say about yourself? I said, well, actually, there is one thing about me that I believe that the other applicants for this job can't bring to the table. Something important, an important connection. They said, well, what's that? And I said, my aunt, Mary Roy Williams, was a teenager when a young Elvis was playing at a county fair in Cupola, crawled up on the stage and forced Elvis to kiss her. <laughs> and she told that story her entire life. That is her favorite story. It's the Elvis kissing incident before Elvis was big. So I said, uh, that's another credential I bring to the mix. And so after that, I hired. So, um, so I wanted to um, just give you a little bit of background on our Big picture planning. Um, the next slide is about our strategic plan. It says, and this is a uh, uh, this is our mission statement. Mississippi's rich arts connections are often unknown or misunderstood. We enlighten and inspire by sharing stories of creative expression, providing opportunity for all generations to reach their full potential. 
So our museum, which is a state museum, is just three years old now, although it's been in development for about two decades. So they've been thinking in this direction for a long, long time at the state leadership level that our, that, that our state needed a place where we, we could acknowledge and celebrate many of the legendary arts figures that came out of Mississippi. Not just, just the music and writing fields, but also other arts venues and fields, pottery, uh, culinary arts, and other areas. So it's, it's a broad range of people and, you, and their influences that we celebrate. And it's something that we can really be extraordinarily proud of uh, in our state. Our museum is immersive, it's engaging, and the name is can throw you off a bit, the max. What is the max? Uh, is it like a entertainment venue? Actually, it's just a very immersive museum that gives serious attention to all of these legendary artists and many artists other, other than those artists that you might not have heard of. Next slide. As you can see on the slide here, uh, it features John Grisham. And the point I'd like to make here is that many, if not most of the artists that we celebrate and uh, study and uh, bring people in touch with at the Max had very modest beginnings. And so they, they went from uh, being unknown to being known not only around the state, but in some cases around the world. One of these artists, uh, of course, would be John Grisham who back in the, when he, pub, when he published his first novel in the late 80s, The Time to Kill, could be seen selling his book from, from the back of his trunk. He would go to a Rotary Club or another civic meeting and he would encourage people to come out to his car and he would open his trunk and say, would you like to buy one of my books? I don't think he has to do that today. And so he is just one of many examples of the artistic uh, influences and figures that come out of our state that have gone on to achieve unbelievable things and also put our state on the map in many ways. Uh, Elvis is another example, of course. Tammy Wynette, whose roots trace to not far from here, she's another. And there are so many others that you'll learn about. Most of these artists that we celebrate overcame great obstacles in achieving the things that they achieved. And that's part of the Mississippi story here too, that's, that's worthy of remembering. Next slide, please. Our um, museum, which is downtown Meridian, right next to the railroad tracks, a few steps away from the Amtrak station. It's a very historic part of town and it's a, $50 million plus investment by the state and by private entities. The, the um, covers 50,000 square feet and more. Uh, it was, the exhibits in this museum were designed by a world-class firm by the name of Gallagher and Associates. It's the same firm that designed the galleries in the National World War II Museum where I worked for a decade. It's the same firm that designed the galleries in the Grammy Museum in Cleveland. So the, the, the galleries uh, in this museum, they're very immersive, they're heavy on video content, very rich and in, entertaining. And so I would, I would highly recommend a visit to the Max when you or your family and friends have a chance. It's really, uh, it's really an amazing place. Next slide. Just as an overview, we have a Hall of Fame gallery that celebrates um, uh, the some many of the people I've mentioned. Um, we have then the second floor is the main area for our permanent galleries, which cover the land, the community, the home, the church, people and places, and then global community. And these are different themes that we explore that uh, help to to explain and and discover the influences on the people that have become great artistic figures in our state. Next slide. This is the rotunda in our Hall of Fame. 
um, area of the museum. As you come in the museum, it's a very uh, stunning uh, circular area where you just wheel around and you see uh, the uh, images and information about 28 different legendary arts figures. Uh, these uh, arts figures include not only Elvis, but a couple of connections to our, our town, uh, Jimmy Rogers, the uh, father of country music, and actress Cecil Ward, among others. The 2020 class added to the Hall of Fame, and this is an evolving list, included Bo Diddley, Charlie Lewis, Tammy Wynette, Margaret Walker, and John Lee Hooker. So it's quite a diverse crowd there. We have a new nominating process now in the works for our next uh, class of Hall of Fame honorees. It's a very meticulous process. It's very uh, carefully vetted and involves a voting procedure. And so we're looking forward to that Hall of Fame gradually growing bigger and bigger. And we can acknowledge other great art figures from our state. Next slide. This gives you an idea of some of the video treatments in the museum. This one is called The Land. And uh, there's a video uh, there where you can walk into the gallery, you can sit down inside a boat as if you're on a river and a bayou. And then uh, the audio explores some of these things about the influences of the land. My father is a lifetime fisherman. When I took him to the museum and I set him down in this boat, this connected with him. He could understand how, how, how the environment and how his fishing experiences connect to the things that we describe. Next slide. This is another area of the second floor called the community. It explores many different community uh, connections uh, to, to the arts uh, legacies in our state. Next slide. This is a really powerful um, area uh, in, and influence on arts in Mississippi, the home. And um, it's very immersive, as you can see. You walk through this, and there's a front porch. There's a clothesline with, clothes, with uh, sheets hanging on the clothesline. And we can all relate to these influences from growing up in Mississippi. And they influence us in many powerful ways, including the people that became important artists. In <laughs> so I, I really enjoy especially that part. On the uh, clothesline, there are image there are images uh, cast onto the to the clothing that really gives you another dimension, a feel for it. Next slide. There's a room that that includes a highlighting of famous authors. In the middle of the room sits a typewriter, and as you walk into the gallery, the typewriter begins to to come alive on its own and begins producing this piece of paper with some sections of a novel. And as you're standing there, you can see sort of the writing process of somebody creating a, a work. And it's, 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 very, uh, it's very fun to watch. Uh, next slide. This shows sort of an interactive room where uh, classes and families can come to make crafts, and art crafts. The, uh, during the COVID crisis, the museum had to close for two months. And uh, apart from that, we've taken many, many measures to try to keep our staff and our visitors safe. But now we're working our way out of that. And these sorts of hands-on activities are resuming uh, in, in number again. And it's really great to hear the sounds of children uh, and young people in the museum again. Next slide. This is one part of the galleries that celebrates culinary artists. Not long ago, the museum had a major food and, and, and drink festival called Sip and Saber, uh, mostly held outside uh, in, our, in our outdoor areas and along a closed street. We attracted about 1,400 people. And we had dozens of uh, really famous uh, culinary uh, artists, chefs who came in to participate 
And all of these people have Mississippi connections. And so it reinforced the idea of Mississippi is not only a, a mecca for writing plays and writing novels and producing music, but producing great food. Uh, this, uh, this artist featured here, his name is Nick Wallace. He's based in Jackson. He's pretty famous, and, but he's very well grounded also. And there's a quote uh, from Nick Wallace that, that I really liked, and it reads as follows. I grew up on the farm, off in the woods, walking through the blueberry bushes, shoes off. I ate dirt as a kid. When I tell you I was living off the soil, I was living off the soil. So this is a chef that understands the, the importance of uh, growing things and how they connect to great food. Next slide. It, it, this is one part of the gallery experience, which is one of my favorites. It's called The Church. And it, it uh, explores the powerful influences of the church on the artistic life of Mississippi and the production of all kinds of artwork. And um, in this church, it's actually a church sanctuary recreated from old pews and, and videos. They have uh, videos of interviews with uh, choir members. There's a, a large choir uh, in Mississippi, it's been, uh, been active for a long time. It's called the Mississippi Mass Choir. It has 240 members, and it, it's just it's a powerhouse uh, cultural influence in the music world in our state. Features them as well as a lot of other people. And on one wall of this particular exhibit, you see a quote on the wall. It's a quote by an architect by the name of Sambo Mockby. I don't know if you've ever heard of Sambo Mockby, but he became famous uh, when he developed a school of architecture that instead of simply building houses and buildings that would satisfy a client, he asked the question, how do we design and build buildings that will serve the needs of the working class and the poor? How do we build community buildings and structures that are economical but actually meet some needs. He was based out of Auburn University, but he actually grew up across the street from me on 25th Avenue in Meridian. And so I saw him as a young person and how he was influenced growing up, his personality and the things that fed in to a career, career that really, he's, he's pretty widely known now. He's deceased and he's, he's greatly missed but he's one of the people uh, that aren't in the Hall of Fame at this point, but he, he is certainly clearly acknowledged at the Mac. Next slide. This just shows uh, from people and places, one of our interactives with kids that we're now bringing back online. The next slide, please. Here's a, here's a feature we call Cultural Trails, and you can go up to the video and you can call up, and this is this reinforces the point that the Max is not just about Meridian. It's not a it's not a Meridian museum, although it's located there. It is a Mississippi museum, and it encourages people to explore the Blues Trail, Rider Trails, different cultural institutions, the Elvis Home here in Tupelo, Oxford, the Delta, Clarksdale, Ocean Springs. All of these places around the state that are part of our arts legacy and stories. And so you can get on this interactive and you can explore different ideas on where you can take your family to help flesh out your own appreciation for these arts legacies. It's a really fun way to spend a little time. And um, as you'll see, the, I brought a copy of our Place magazine and it features uh, Bay St. Louis. And that's just one of the arts, art centered or art, arts heavy towns that you find in Mississippi that are worthy, are worthy of a visit. And we are systematically trying to explore and highlight those places. Next slide. We have also on the second floor, a sort of a surround um, video experience called the Global Community and it explores the legacies and the personal stories of 
Elvis, of Oprah, and of Tennessee Williams, just to cite three examples. So these powerhouse names, it helps you to bring, bring you in touch with how these people uh, uh, journeyed through the art world and became famous and uses their own words, their own stories and interviews to do that. It's, it's very entertaining and informative. And so I wouldn't miss it. Next slide. What am I? In addition to our permanent exhibits, we have uh, ongoing special exhibits. One of our early powerful special exhibits that drew large crowds uh, explored the story of Jim Henson, who was originally from the Mississippi Delta, and how he was influenced by his childhood and created the characters that would later become world famous. Next slide. This uh, digital board inside the museum highlights many different people who perform uh, and who might appear or perform at the Max. One of them is Jamal Roberts, who is also a member of our security staff. He's a gospel musician, and this uh, brings to, this helps to make the point that some of our own people are artists in their own right. And so the people that are running the museum have their own artistic stories to tell in many cases. On the right, you see an image of our, our gift shop, which has a lot of unusual books and other, uh, have McCarty pottery from the Delta and other unusual items that, that people really love to buy that you don't find uh, everywhere. Next slide. Education and connecting with young people, especially to, uh, from, the age, from the ages of, say, junior high, high school, up to young adulthood, is part of our mission. And it's been, it's been brought out more and more recently in our strategic planning. We call this young person our hero. And that's not to, to negate any other audience that we want to connect with, families of all kinds, people of all ages. But we really want to connect with that young person who might be inspired by these arts legacies, either in their own education, in their own work, or simply be inspired to have a balanced and, and high quality of life. So that, this is at the center of our strategic planning present. This summer, we have a program that we're going to initiate. We'll probably build on it in future years. It's called the Success Program. We're going to bring in 10 young people from the Meridian region and for uh, workshops in music technology and music production. We have a state-of-the-art music recording studio at the Max, and it's, it can compete with any recording studio anywhere. It's not big, but it's state-of-the-art. And these students are going to be exposed to, to what can happen in that studio. So that's one, one of these programs that we're excited about that connects with the, the hero idea. We want these young people to, to be inspired and to be thinking about how it might impact their own careers or their own educations. Next slide. Just some more images uh, of young people at the museum. And then uh, scroll to the couple of next slides. Adult education, youth education, uh, we have classes for adults as well as youth. We teach pottery, painting, um, and those programs are revving up now again. We're big uh, on teacher training. We have workshops and we collaborate with local school systems and you'll see more and more of that in the years to come. And then, um, let me see where we are. Next slide. There's a, um, Reference to family programming. Uh, you see a lot of activities that we have out on our, our uh, grassy area outside the museum. We can have concerts there. We can have public, other public activities. We have a Choctaw Expressions uh, temporary exhibit now at the museum. And on one day, we had uh, a, a large group of Choctaw artisans come over and they demonstrated stickball and other arts and crafts and made that connection to the community, which is not far at all from the radio. Then last, the next slide. 
I don't know if you guys know this individual, but he's here in Tupelo, T. Francis. He um, will soon uh, be featured and celebrated in a special exhibit at the Max. And the, the exhibit opens July the 27th. And he is a narrative artist, narrative visual artist. He tells stories through his visual art. And the story he will tell in the exhibit at our museum is called The Walking Catfish. We're really excited that this Tupelo connection, this Key Francis connection, can be made with the Max. And I'll, I want to publicly thank the Karen Gallery here in Tupelo for agreeing to sponsor this exhibit. So uh, this is another way, another example of how we can reach out and connect with other parts of our state. So I will close with this last slide. For the first time, Mississippi's writers, visual and musical artists, actors, and other creative legends are being celebrated under one roof via high-tech interactive multimedia exhibits, themed galleries, and hands-on activities for all ages. I would encourage you to come to Meridian, visit the Max, help us to spread the word that this is a great, great state resource. It's a must-see uh, if you live in, and enjoy Mississippi and its cultural arts. And um, we, uh, we look forward to many fruitful years ahead to more collaboration with communities like Two Club. If there are any questions, I'll try to answer. Yes, sir. I'm not a trick question, but how long a minimum should you allow to at least get them exposed to the first trip? I would at, at least set aside two hours. You could easily spend four hours or the better part of the day there, depending on whether you want to see every interactive and read every panel. But to get a, the overview, to walk around, and to really appreciate it, I would, I would say at least two hours. Uh, Sean, do you have a different thought on that? I think that's really good. I, there is also another uh, new institution that the Max is partnering with, the uh, Children's Museum, that's just a, a family activities just a couple blocks away, east of walking distance. You can trust me, that might add to a, a full day. That's a, a great point. Uh, most people travel to a place not to do one thing, they want to do multiple things. Uh, and we got Weidman's restaurant around the corner, the oldest restaurant in Mississippi. We got Riley Center, uh, major acts come there. The Children's Museum, as you mentioned, uh, and, and other attractions in, in Meridian. So it's, <coughs> it's, it's a pretty rich place to visit, depending on how much time you have. Is the Children's Museum open? Yes, sir. It's been open a few months now, and, and they're just finishing up on some of their landscaping. But it's it's a beautiful uh, new children's museum. Very impressive. Yes, sir. What's your parking situation like? Uh, not so much. We there's a fair amount of street parking there that are it's within a few you know a couple minutes walk to get into the museum. They don't have a big a designated parking lot. They do have a small parking lot uh, that can be used at times, depending on um, the staff needs. But there's there's plenty of parking in downtown Meridian. Yes, sir. Hours and costs. The hours, hours and costs. Uh, the 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 cost is is runs in I believe it's twelve dollars or so uh, per head. But then there are better rates if you're a veteran or if you're part of a, a large group. Uh, so the, the costs are very manageable. Depending on, on um, if you're a member, uh, it's free. So it's unlimited free visits if you're a member, and that's part of my job is building membership. So I'll be happy to, to help you with that. Tell us a little bit about that. The membership program um, we have several hundred uh, people in different classes there uh, of membership. We have individual membership, it's, it's $50. Uh, dual membership, it's $90. Family membership, I think it's uh, $150. And that's for a one year uh, with benefits uh, for museum membership. So you get unlimited visits to the museum and no charge, no admission. 
We also get our, our place quarterly. We get in the invitations to special events. And um, so it's it's pretty pretty nice membership program that we're building out rapidly now. And it's all, you can do all of this through their website. It's free, msarts.org. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was going to make a statement and ask a question. I did visit the center when I was there at the convention a couple of years ago. I only had two hours, which was great, but you need more than that if you have the time. You can see a lot of it, but I felt like I could have spent a half a day there at least one time. And I was going to mention the Raleigh Center. Do you find yourself partnering? Do they? I mean, we come there for a convention about every three or four years. Do they host many conventions? I know, I know it's been crazy, just open and that year of shutdown, Canada. But uh, do you see that as something that the Max will do, partner with the Wallace Center as they bring groups in? Absolutely. We, we do that where we can. Our last, uh, in the fall, when we had COVID restricted uh, ceremony for our, our new Hall of Fame. Um, nominees. Uh, it was at the Riley Center in the Opera House there. If you've never seen the Opera House, which is historic, in the Riley Center in Britain, it, it is amazing. It is something out of another time. And it's beautifully restored. Many millions went into that. So, yes, we partner with them where we can. And we just had an event the other day where they paraded a lot of young people from an event over at the Riley Center to our campus for more activities. And so we, we help to promote each other wherever we can. And if you come to town to see a Max uh, or to visit the Max, you, you could combine that with plans for attending a, one of the, the concerts at the Raleigh Center, which is plan ahead. It's also, really I should good. note that the Three Foot Hotel will open soon in downtown Meridian. That's going to be a big attraction. I'm sorry. Is the really good brew pub still open right across the street? The brew pub? Yeah. It's, uh, Boutique or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's very active. And they, they actually have some, they, uh, they actually have, there's a cigar store across the street from the salsa, like a uh, specialty cigar, Cuban cigar store. It's called Twin City Cigar. So, yes, the, the, the brew pub is open and they have some outdoor concerts there as well. Yes, sir. Are any of your videos on your website? Educational videos and things like that. Those on your site? Yes, uh, not uh, many of them are not, but you will find some great uh, videos through our website. Some of our events are also streamed live or they're archived that can be accessed through the website. So the website will give you a good sample of what you know the, the, the richness of the material that we work with. So you can spend quite a bit of time on the website. See plenty of video if, if you'd like to do that. What's the size of your staff? <coughs> Our staff is uh, it's pretty small. Uh, I just went over some numbers. Do you know the latest on that, Sean? By chance? I believe that our uh, total staff is uh, a couple of dozen. That's about uh, that's about it. We've lost. Uh, we've we've gone through some retrenchment. Had some budget cutting during COVID because of the impact of this in many ways. And so it's 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 probably in the mid-20s. We have part-time and full-time staff. Um, so it's 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 a modest size museum staff uh, with people who take on multiple roles uh, because it's not a big museum. We gotta pitch in wherever we can. But do you get any tax support from the reading? We do, we have a food and beverage tax that uh, there's a 2% food and beverage tax, and it's uh, set up uh, when the max opened to help subsidize, not pay for everything, but help subsidize and support the launch of the museum. And that's an ongoing tax. And, and uh, so that's certainly a, a big help, but um, we, uh, we are very aggressive about, and very determined to, to address any, any of our financial uh, needs through admissions, through attracting people through the door, through our membership program, and through other donor or grant support. That's been part of my time, uh, of course, uh, working on those things. Any other questions or thoughts?
Yes, sir. Just a You can't you can't be at lunch at Widens, but there's some other good places downtown also. And so what I'm hearing is that uh, plan for four hours uh, if you if you can manage it. And Tom's planning it that far in case we get in there. Okay, that's even better. Meet you there. All right. Well, thank you for your time and and come see us when you can.